Yeah, it really is that bad. Hey everyone, Joe Tillman back with part three of the Maria Fowler interview. Now, if you recall in part two of the interview, I was talking to Maria and she was talking about what it's like to have a bad hair transplant. And if you recall, she didn't have any hair loss. She just wanted to lower her hairline because she was born with a naturally high hairline to begin with. And she felt that she needed to lower it. Um, I don't think she did. I thought she looked great without it, but that's, that was her decision. And she wound up um, realizing what it's like to have a bad hair transplant because of her decision. So in this episode or this um, part of the interview, she's going to be talking about how she felt when she realized that she needed to do her research and she compares the research she did for her hair transplant to the research she does for other things in her life. That part is interesting. Before we jump into that, I want to I want to re-examine her hairline because it really is that bad. Um, I got some photos here and I think that if, if you recall from the last video, I think it was, I was pointing out the linear nature of the placement of her graphs, how the graphs were in rows that were very easily visible as a pattern, which is not how hair grows in the scalp, or at least not like that. But you can see in the placement, this photo was taken maybe a day or two after her initial procedure from 2017, and you can see the pattern just with the placement from the scabs. It mimics and mirrors what her final result turned out to be, but of course the hair was grown out, but you can see that pattern in those images and in that video. But what's more interesting is when you look at the image of the final growth and you see something that we didn't discuss before. You can see how the hair is growing vertically, but what you might not have noticed are these bumps. Now I talked about the ridges, um, which contributes to scar, or it is scarring, on her scalp and she actually has quite a bit of scarring. You can see the reflective nature of, of the tissue. But one thing that we see when we zoom in is that we can see that there are these, these round lumps at the base of the hairs. What are those round lumps? They're scar tissue. And at the base of these, these lumps, you can see the number of hairs exiting those lumps or exiting that scar tissue. And it's actually quite disturbing to see. When you look at this one here, you can see that there's actually several hairs sticking out of this one lump. And that means that that lump represents one graft that had that many hairs in them. If you move over next to it, just a little bit further away, you can see this lump, this piece of scar tissue. It has, I believe I counted nine hairs sticking out of it, which means that there was one graft that potentially had nine hairs in it. And that's not how hair grows in nature. And the only way this is possible is if the clinic is not using microscopes. And I talked about that in my Celebrity Hair Transplant Disaster Kyle Christie Effect video from last year, where I'm talking about the differences between modern hair transplants using microscopes and modern hair transplants not using microscopes. And I compare the, and I compare the, uh, the hair transplants without microscopes to mini micrografting from the 1980s and 1990s. That's what we've got here. But I don't even remember seeing work like this in the 1990s, so this is a whole nother level of stupid. But enough about that. Um, let's get back into the interview with Maria. Um, I've got a lot more footage, a lot more uh, of this interview with Maria. I think we talked for over an hour, and this is part three, and we've not even gotten through the first half of everything I've recorded, so there's a lot more to come. Uh, check it out. And don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell for when new uploads are coming. You can get notified and see more of Maria Fowler's result. I feel like, why was I so stupid? Because like, I'm in an, I've been in an industry and I've been in a world where like everybody gets, everybody gets things done. Like I've had my teeth done, you know, things like that. And, those things I would seriously, seriously research, mm -hmm. like hours and hours. And for some reason, like hair transplants is one of those things that it's just not in that category of cosmetic surgery. And you think, it's hair. What can go wrong with hair? Like, yeah. I can't believe that I was that stupid <laughs> to just go in there so naive and have not have researched it because that is, that is a totally against 
how I am as a person. I'm very cautious. Do you know what? I, I'd research a builder or a decorator more than I research my hair transplant, and that's the honest truth. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. Like, well, you're you're not alone. I mean, that that is uh, what you just said is is very true. For a lot of people, they think, well, you're just moving hair. What, you know, you move it from one place and stick it in another, and as long as it grows, what what's the problem? But what most people don't realize is that this is one of the most complicated surgeries, cosmetic surgeries there are, because you're dealing with thousands of individual hairs that yeah. all they all have to be placed in a similar fashion, angle, direction the whole nine yards for for it to look natural. And if it doesn't look natural, even if it's not, you know, even if it's just a little bit unnatural, it still draws the eye. Eyeballs yes. will kind of glance up. You know, people are talking to your hair, not to your, to your face. And it can be yeah. very damaging to your self-conscious or to your um, self-confidence. Oh, yeah. If one part of that kind of chain isn't right yeah then it's it's a, it's a failure the weak link stands head. out <laughs> that's that's a good and, analogy with the chain yeah like why do you want why do you want your hair to look your hairline to look fake people yeah they want their teeth to look fake their boobs to look fake you can kind of get that in ways but why would you want your hairline to look fake like yeah. it's not like it's just it's crazy because there are there are I think there's more surgeons out there from what I've researched that are bad than there are good. Yeah. And it's just so important to, I can't even explain how important it is to research. And from having a bad hair transplant, I've seen the forums, like these people are like passionate about where to go and what, and they're so, you know, people like yourself, like so knowledgeable and so ready and willing to give advice and give help and like, steer people in the right direction and there's there's still people every day online making the same mistakes and it's it just needs to be the word needs to kind of like get out even more 